everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me here tonight for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners and I'm here every weeknight Monday through Friday at 8 30 p.m central time. It's a time that we can relax and craft together. All right you guys we totally uh, basically finished this uh, sweater last night. So this is the sweater that we uh, converted it into a cardigan. It's my mom's sweater that she had in high school and uh, we cut it in half uh, through steaking and we needle felted the edges and then we added some grosgrain ribbon for some uh, sturdiness for the inside of the seam. And tonight I am going to make the uh, sleeves a little bit longer. We are going to add some knitting, which I haven't done in ages, it feels like. Uh, we're going to add some knitting to the cuff. So it's a bit longer. And I think it actually needs to be quite a bit longer, like almost like, I don't know, maybe three or four inches or so. So we'll see how that goes. Like I said, I have not knit in ages. I had to Google how to pick up stitches again. I had to Google how to do a cast off on a ribbing. And I'm nervous. I'm not even going to be able to Pearl. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It feels so foreign to me. I haven't done it in ages, I feel like. So anyway, let's get going today. All right, I'm going to flip you around. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to zoom you guys right on down. But first, here's the sweater, the little pretty uh, grosgrain ribbon on the inside. I think that turned out so cute. Uh, and then here's the sleeve that I want to want to lengthen. I'll start with this side and then we'll do the other side. So I'm going to zoom you down. All right. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. All right. So a few things uh, that I had to like look at here to figure out this knitting. First of all, I realized that the uh, um, this this um, sleeve was not knit in the round. It was actually like there's, it's seamed. So it was knit flat uh, back and forth, which is even more impressive to me because there are like the same design patterns here. Like this is the same as this. And then we have the same style cables here, but this was knit in the round. Um, but this was knit going back and forth, meaning you'd had to like, you just basically had to do these two cables differently, like in your head. Um, like instead of doing a knit stitch here, if it was on the other side, you'd be doing a purl. It's just, it's just crazy to me. So even these like detailed, like even this one, um, all had to be done back and forth and back and forth instead of around and around, which um, makes it a different, different, um, thing to deal with. So anyway, there is a seam, um, but I am going to go in the round. So that'll be kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, so, and, and so like, I'm going to count this seam as like one knit stitch. Uh, so there's that. So I'm going to attempt to just go in the round. I do have to pick up stitches. Like I said, I had to Google how to do that again. Um, <laughs> but we're going to give it a try. Um, the other thing is this yarn that I have here, this is the yarn that we use to stitch up the edge. I am not sure it is the same size. Hold on, let me see your comments here. Oh, Gina, I did model it. So, oh, I didn't post it though. I just posted it, a video on TikTok. So I will post it on um, Facebook and Instagram. I don't know if it's short enough for Instagram, but I'll, I'll try and post it on Facebook tonight. Um, but yeah, I showed like a before and after of it. And then you can see, you can really see that the, the uh, cuffs are really, I don't know, like a good three inch. Like I need to make it at least this long. And I'd actually kind of like it a hair longer. It's going to look crazy, but I was like, I wore it today and my wrists were exposed all day and it, it was a little annoying. Uh, but oh, dang, it was so warm all day. It was, it was very nice can always make it like three inches and fold it back over the cuff. So that's kind of what I was thinking too, Amy. I could always make it a little bit longer and uh, fold it back. And kind of on that note, um, I'm trying to figure out the size of everything. I, I'm not going to do a gauge because I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of think about it and um, give it a go. But I, I, uh, 
this yarn seems like it's, I don't know, maybe a little smaller than, than the yarn used originally. I mean, this yarn has also maybe fluffed up quite a bit. So I'm tempted to actually stitch with two strands. So like if I did two strands, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm getting closer to that same thickness, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. So let me know um, what you think about that. And uh, um, the other thing is, I don't think that they switch to like a smaller needle when they switch to the ribbing. But I think that's okay. I'm just a little nervous. Like, I'm just trying to decide kind of what needle to use. Uh, the yarn recommends like a, a four and a half uh, millimeter, which is a size US 7. But I was looking at that. I have, I'm using my, I get to use this again. So anytime I get to use my, uh, my interchangeable uh, needles here, I'm excited. So I have my flexible long, um, I don't know, whatever you call this thing. <laughs> oh, Amy says vote single strand. Yeah, I suppose we could see. And if it seems just tiny, we can always take it out and, and do it again. Um, I just really think it's going to be small, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, I have this, my flexible cord. <laughs> and so these are the four and a halfs, or the size, size sevens, but this just seemed like awfully small I thought but now that I'm looking at it again maybe these are fine otherwise I have this side has the bigger ones I always have a scissors with every project so I got that guy in there um the size um this is the next size up so these are US 8s I'm almost thinking that's maybe a little bit better I suppose we can start with the fours and see let me know, any knitters out there, if that seems right. Okay, if it seems tiny, up the needle size. Oh, just so, just make it like, so, okay, so then it would be thinner. And we could just up the needle size. So, all right, maybe let's just, let's just try that. I'm going to try the slightly bigger needle and we'll, um, oh, maybe I'll just go with, yeah, I'll, I'm going to go with a slightly bigger needle and then we'll, just do a single strand to start out. That would be easier for me to do anyway. So I, it, just in case I did have an extra ball of yarn here, it's, I mean, the label's different, but it's still the patent's classic wool. Uh, it's the same size. It seems like the same color. So if I did need to double up, I'd have that. Or if I just ran out, because I don't know how long this one's going to last. But all right, let's give it a go. So first of all, I got to um, stick these guys in here, which isn't always the easiest thing. Let's give, give that a try. Okay, those seem there, good. And this side, sometimes I have to open, like open up that little flange on there a little bit more. So these are my, uh, not adjustable needles, what do you call these, interchangeable needles. I'm tempted to like, I, I, I'm in cleanup mode, so I'm almost tempted to get rid of all my other needle, knitting needles <laughs> since I have, have these now, okay. We're, we're in there. I just always want to make sure that those are locked in. Okay, let's attempt to pick up some stitches here. Where's that seam again? There we go. So I'm going to start at the seam and I'm going to treat that as like one stitch, I think. And uh, actually, I'm probably going to end at the seam. I'm going to start I'm going to start at an easy one right here. So I'm going to start a little bit over. Um, so I'm not going to pick up right. I'm not going to pick up just like the cast off area. I'm going to pick up uh, the one row down. So like right here. We'll see how this goes. I do have a, um, let's see which way would I do this. I do have a crochet hook on standby if I need to use that, but hopefully I Hopefully I'll be okay. Oop, I've already lost it. This is actually kind of tight right here. 
All right. And uh, so it's a little goofy because it's a rib already. So I'm going through a pearl here. Oh my God, you guys, I have not knit forever. I forgot. <laughs> I just went into knit mode right now and forgot that I was actually picking up stitches. I gotta go a little bit slower. There we go. So that's our second. And we're just gonna go all the way around and pick up our stitches. Gosh, this makes me so nervous already. All right, size seven is a, oh, very standard sweater size needle. Oh, okay, and, uh, oh, so maybe I, should, maybe I should switch to, did I do the eights? Yeah, I did the eights, so maybe I should switch to the sevens, although, um, oh, wait, but I'm doing, like, the single strand. So I'm doing kind of, I think, a little smaller yarn. Um, with a slightly bigger needle. So now ribbing, you to you usually, I think, want it actually a little bit smaller. Um, but I don't know, I think I knit kind of tightly and this seems pretty loose. So I'm gonna go about halfway and then I will pull them all the way through and then the rest will sit on the, um, <laughs> what's this called? This little cord thing. It's gonna sit on that for a while. Oh, Amy says, let's see where it goes. You're thinking is solid. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, so, and, it, and I think it's okay if it ends up being a little tighter because theoretically ribbing, ribbing you want a little bit, um, you want it to be a little bit tighter. You don't want it like flaring out, I guess is, is more like it. Um, so we don't want that. And if it starts doing that, then, then I'll definitely switch to that smaller size seven needle. So this is a, this is a rib. Um, it, it's a one, I don't know, what do you call that? One to one rib. So it's one knit and then one purl. So I'll just have to keep doing that around and around and around until it's long enough. And this is easy enough that I can just count the number of rows probably. So I'll just knit this one until I feel like it's long enough. We can even try it on. And uh, then, um, then I'll just do the same amount on the other side. <laughs> I did also do this with my, did the left, the left hand first, the left um, cuff first, just because I'm, I'm, that's probably a less active hand than my right hand. <laughs> so I was even thinking like that. All right, this isn't um, probably quite halfway around, but I'm going to um, pull the stitches out just through, through this because it's getting harder to, um, harder to get the needle through but I don't know that's pretty close and the middle is like right here so we'll put, I'm gonna just like we'll treat this as the middle so okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna go one more stitch here and then then I will um, do the the rest of it uh, oh I went to continental right away let's let's go back to the the throwing way the of the wrap okay so there we go so I'm gonna do that many and now I'm just going to kind of rotate my whole piece a little bit here. We're going to be twisting this guy up quite a bit. All right. So now this is why I like the, light, the long cord versus the double pointed needles is because I can just get um, this needle back over here like it's about to start knitting. And uh, I can just let this drag out behind me and I can continue to pick up stitches versus having like a bunch of double pointed needles everywhere. Those freak me out. <laughs> I can knit with double pointed needles, but I, I have like, I got like I got some fear with knitting. Like, oops, let's let's uh, do the other hand again. Um, with knitting, like all my stitches falling out, <laughs> and that gets exacerbated when I'm using double pointed needles. I feel like. Oops, lost that one. Feeling good about these, uh, picking up the stitches so far though. So that's, that's, that's like honestly a win for me for tonight. This is, 
This is an advanced technique for me. I mean, I've done this sort of thing before, but man, I, it's so far and in between um, when I knit lately. I've kind of been itching to start a new, like, nice big knit project. Oh, they call the circular part a cord. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for looking that up for me, Amy. Ah. Yeah, I've been just calling it like the cable or something. I think I'm kind of a, I said this already, I think though, but I think I'm a kind of a tight knitter. So um, this is probably going to be smaller anyway. Uh, we're almost, we're getting there. I feel like these are less loose, these stitches to these, these uh, stitches I'm picking up here. Oh, magic loop is that is that what um what it's called when you're doing uh like instead of do using the double pointed needles doing it with this like loose um cord uh what's nice uh that this kit that i have this um oh my um what are they called? Oh, the collage square. So these are my square interchangeable needles. The nice thing is it comes with several different sizes of these cables and uh, um, some are stiff and some are really loose like this one and I'm really kind of liking these loose ones. The stiff ones are nice though for, for certain projects for sure. All right, we're almost around. And then we are ready to start knitting. Let's see. Oh, I'm getting to that. All right, so I have one more, and then I'm to the part where it's, you know what, I'm going to shimmy these through. I'm just a little bit, just to help myself out again. Um, I'm getting to that part where it's it's sewn, like the where they join the two sides. Oops, fell out again. And uh, um, I'm going to count that as one stitch. So on the other... On the other um, cuff, it's actually a bit wider, but I'm still going to count it as one. I'm just trying to figure out where to stab. So it's just right. Yeah, I guess we'll just go to where it naturally wants to go. There we are. A bit lower, but I think we'll be okay. And yeah, this is the last one right here. Ooh, that one's a little tough too. Yeah, we're going to do that one again. I think that's part that's partially in the sewn area here. Oh yeah, he's not gonna wanna come through here. Ah. I'm gonna go one down, I think maybe that'll help. There we go, oops, I think I didn't get it all. Well, another way to do this uh, is to treat it like you're actually knitting. So by getting the other needle out and sticking it in there first, stretching it out a little bit and then getting your other needle in there. But wow, this is really, really tight. This is my last uh, stitch I'm picking up. Ooh, there we go, so that worked. <laughs> okay, so we are ready to go here so I'm going to finish bringing my needle all the way through on this side I wonder if we should count these let's let's get untangled too I'm gonna have to keep rotating the sweater during this whole thing but okay we're we're ready and uh, um, I should just be able to do uh, like knit one purl one knit one purl one so I think we'll start out with um, doing the the throwing way of of knitting, <laughs> just because that's the way I learned, and I'm, I'm I feel a little bit more comfortable doing that, uh, especially with pearls. And then maybe I'll switch to continental after that style knitting, just because that's what I'm trying to practice at um, 
a little bit, but since I'm just starting this up again, I'm feeling like I need to start with what I most comfortable. I don't know if I need a stitch marker. Like this is such a small little area that I think I'll just be able to see, like I'll just stop where ultimately where the join is here. We're like one, one after the join. So we're like the first pearl after the join. I could put a stitch marker though. That's kind of fun. Let's do it. It's jewelry, jewelry for knitting, right? So let's just see. Oh, Sherry Hill says, um, mark, mark the first stitch too. All right, let's do it. I must have that in my little baggie here. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I, I know I have a really actually pretty stitch marker that I like, but it looks like that is not in here. So I have um, little pieces of yarn for stitch markers. And you know what? That works too. Oh, where's my little bead? I know I had one at some point. Oh, well. I think I actually know where I might be able to find it. A little ruler in here. Ooh, I should maybe keep this out. We might, um, we might want this. I don't know why, but... That would have that would have required me having measured how much I want to do this, how uh, big I want this ribbing to be um, beforehand. But I don't remember if I did that. I didn't like measure it for real. So all right, I'm just putting my stitch marker on here. It's just literally a piece of uh, yarn, or it's like a piece of like cotton thread here. Okay, let's attempt to do this thing. So all right. Ooh, this is gonna feel great though. I love knitting and I just haven't done it in ages. Um, it does feel nice to do it again though. So, all right, knit pearl. Oh my God, let's see if I can remember how to do this. All right, um, gosh, I can't even remember how to hold my thread right. So here's the knit. Yep, and then the next one will be a pearl. So anytime there's a bump, that's gonna be a pearl. And anytime there's like this pretty V, that will be a knit. So we'll see how we do. Oh, you think I need an even number of stitches? I should have the right amount because I just went into the knit pearls. You know what, should we count? Let's just count. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, Oh, now I lost count already. It, it should be fine because I was going in the knit and purl. Like I was paying attention to me picking up the stitches. So it should be just like that. Um, but let's do two, just out of curiosity, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I have 18 on this side. And two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 16 and 16 on that side. So what is that? <laughs> 34 is that is that math workout? Um, so we do have an even even number. Okay, so knit, knit and purl. I used to. So this is funny. Um, I used to do pearls wrong, and it, now I have like a little phobia of that too. So I. I um, used to go, you know, purl and I'd wrap around this way, but you're supposed to wrap through the middle. So I had been adding like an extra twist to my pearls forever. And I might pretty quickly switch to continental because I'm already annoyed at doing it this way. But my knits and pearls seem in the right spot, so I'm happy about that. So I think this style is called like throwing, right? Um, where I have have the yarn, I'm holding the yarn in my right hand and you're sort of like throwing the yarn over, right? Uh, so uh, it, it, it has another name though too, right? Like English style or something. No, don't count. Yeah, I don't think I need to, I didn't think I really needed to count. Um, I, I was paying attention when I was picking up the stitches uh, to go right in like a knit and then a purl and knit and a purl. So I don't, I didn't really think I needed to do that, but out of curiosity. Knit. Purl. 
this is where you can just zone out and it gets super duper relaxing. This is going to get a little looser as we go here, just if we're in that first round. Pearl. Okay. So now I can just drag my needle through. So this is like versus those double pointed needles again. Let's just see how this is looking. So it's definitely smaller. I think that might be a good thing. It, it is quite a bit smaller. Let's just let it be for now. I'm gonna let it be smaller for a little. And you know what? It, we might want that. Like I might want these cuffs to get a bit smaller as as we go here. So all right, I'm just pulling this other needle back, this one out. And we'll get this other side starting with a knit and then it should be easy peasy because we'll be done with our our pickup stitches. We'll just be like normal knitting then. Ugh, this is exciting though. I, I feel like just happy <laughs> to be knitting knitting like an extension onto this this piece like I just feel um oops I didn't put the neat the thread back it just feels good to be just adding to it like it's joining joining the process you know knit So I, I shouldn't even need to like remember knit and purl because I can see I'm at the V, so I need to do a knit. And the next one is that bump, which is the purl, so I need to do the purl. So I don't I don't even really need to pay that close attention. Oh, I knit different than you. So I'm I'm gonna switch to continental style knitting in a sec here, so that might be that might be closer to what you did. It's funny, I didn't my mom knits continental and uh, I didn't learn that way. I learned from like a friend's mom or something. So, and she did the throwing method. Uh, so I've just kind of, that's how I did it forever. And then it, it wasn't until like kind of relatively like as an adult that I uh, started to try continental style, but I still have to switch back to the throwing method when I'm doing like fancy stuff like, I don't know, yarn overs and all that sort of thing. Be sure to tighten that second stitch after switching needles or you'll get a ladder. Okay, so I, how do I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but how do I tighten it? Just, just kind of pick at it a little bit? Because I know what you're talking about and that's another reason why I don't especially like the um, double pointed needles because I get those little ladders in there a lot. Um, is, there, is there a trick to that? I watched a thing on left-handed knitting. Oh, and it still didn't come back to me. Okay, I'm almost, I gotta get myself some more yarn here. Ooh, it'll be fun if I use up this thing of yarn, then that's one less yarn thing I got sitting around here. Okay, so now here's, here's that weird join. I just did a purl, yeah. Now I'm doing a knit. This is where the, uh, um, where the sleep is sewn together. Okay, made it around once. All right, I think let's twist back around this way. <laughs> uh, just because we're dealing with that sleeve versus turning the whole sweater around. All right, so we're just kind of switching needles again here. So pull the yarn tightly, just more tender. So just, just, um, just, oh, I did it a little bit there. So just pull tighter when I'm doing that switch. Okay, I can do that for sure. Okay, and I'm gonna switch to continental knitting now too, just to see if I can do that again. So continental knitting is where I hold the yarn with, oops, and here's my marker, fell off too. Um, when I hold the yarn with my, other hand. So the marker is nice because um, theoretically I could s switch this like where where um, you know my needles change really easily with this method. I can just like I can move it over a stitch. I mean I can do that now. It's just well I'm gonna keep it for now. Um, but you know every once in a while I could just move it over a stitch and that will um, help me from keeping like a really like loose ladder going up the two up up the side as well. 
So, all right, so Continental, let's get some slack here. Continental, I'm going to hold with my other hand here. Oh, gosh, I'm getting used to my hand position again, too. Um, so now my left hand is holding the thread. This is typically much faster, but again, i just so used to the other way that I, this scares me a little. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, and you can kind of use, like, your pad as, like, the knitting the pad of your finger is like your knit area. So that's right. So I can just kind of scoop it out. <laughs> and then I can just flip to the front for the pearl. So the pearl is so much faster too. Flip to the back, do your knit. Flip to the front, do the pearl. Oh yeah, way faster. Knit, pearl. You just do that little finger flip. Oh yeah, this is feeling comfortable. All right, happy to be doing it this way again. And I think after this row, we'll be able to see like how much tighter we are. Like maybe I'll need to even switch to bigger needles. Since I haven't stitched for a while, I don't think I'm very gentle or loose here. Pearl, knit, and pearl. Ta -da! All right. How are we looking? Well, Everything's in the right spot, so that's that's good. Oh, Sherry says, this, yep, that's my style. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that that felt really good. So I must have been practicing um, that the continental style a lot uh, more recently because that felt felt the most comfortable. And yeah, doing a doing a ribbing rib like this in um, in continental is so much faster because it's so quick to switch to the um, switch to the knit knit to the pearl, which is, you know, what ribbing is. Uh, sometimes you do like, you know, two knits and one pearl or two knits, two pearls. Uh, this is just a one knit, one pearl scenario. I just finished my first pair of socks using the magic loop method. Oh, nice. Oh, ripped out four times. Oh, no, Lenore. But the finished one fits great and more warm. Ugh. I've heard, it's already looking pretty with the red accent. Oh, thanks so thanks so much, Marsha. Uh, Deborah says it looks good. Yeah, I mean, even just like, like I like even just this tiny bit. However, I am going to add like a lot just because I do want this longer. Like I said, on my, I wore it today all day and it went to like about here. So this much wasn't covered and I was so warm. It was so, it's like so thick and squishy except for my wrist was, uh, was chilly. So I'm like, yep, we're adding adding extra here. Oh, problem is we got to keep rotating this sleeve. So I can either keep rotating the sleeve and keep twisting this more and more, uh, or keep, like, back rotating, which is awkward. All right, anyway, let's do the second side here. This is going to get more comfortable as I go, for sure. So like I said, it's been a, been a tick since I've done this. So we'll definitely work on, let's see, it's Wednesday today. We'll definitely probably work on this throughout the rest of the week, but I'm pretty excited about it. So wherever we're at tonight, oh, so here's where I got to go a little, a little um, tighter just to not have that ladder happen. Uh, but wherever we are tonight, I will um, put it on and, and measure it before coming on tomorrow because I don't think we're going to get terribly far with this ribbon ribbing, ribbing. <laughs> um, so, uh, that'll give me an opportunity to measure and just like, how long do I want this? And then, um, then we'll know for sure, <laughs> like with a ruler. Knit pearl. So that'll be good. Then the second side will be easy. I'll just match the number of stitches, number of rows. I mean, Generally the length, but in the end we'll probably actually count. Man, I've been like jumping all over the crafts lately. So I did, uh, I also kind of shared, some people were asking about needle felting. 
um, on TikTok. So I did a little quick TikTok of, uh, of needle felting and made this little cute little heart guy today. I thought this would be kind of actually cute to put like on the sleeve or, um, like near the collar. I could actually turn it into a pin though too. I was thinking, oh, I could just like stitch or glue like a pin. Then it'd be like kind of more of like a floaty pin, which would be kind of cute. But anyway, so that's, did that today. You know, yesterday I did some tatting and, you know, sewing in the evening. Now I'm knitting. Dang, it was, it's, it's, this is like a brain teaser. This is why people like do crossword puzzles and stuff, right? So just, so instead just switch over, switch crafts a zillion times throughout the week. All right, so that was our second row. So I'm not counting rows. I'm just going to go till it's the right length. And my mom and I were actually talking about that because we were talking about like this, um, the cables and everything are, are just crazy in, in this, in this sweater. Like there's just tons and tons and tons of cables. And, uh, we're like, Oh man. And, was, and mom's like, ah, she probably just knew the pattern and just kept going and going and and didn't like look at rows or anything like that and just just measured i'm like yeah you're probably right she just probably knit till it was like you know the 40 inches or whatever that it needed to be like it's not like oh do 30 rows and then do this it was just by measurement so that makes total sense and that's what i'm gonna do here too Ugh. this would be the perfect knitting project to like knit on the couch and watch a movie because it's just this rib that's so easy and it, it's so warm. It'd be like having a little, oops, uh, split that thread. It'd be like having a little blankie on, on your lap the whole time. So I'm still getting used to these needles too. These are square needles. And the theory is that the pads of your fingers rest on the flat parts so that um, like repetitive stress is less because um, you know like if you're knitting for a long time on round needles that curve your your thumb is right at the point of that curve or wh whatever all your fingers and then uh, that can cause like little numb points right at those po those points where it touches the um, needle and theoretically these flat ones these square ones if you do it right i'm not sure i am um then it will your your fingers will rest on the flat part and then you won't have like that little pinpoint pain that can happen oh marcia i i'll put all of them on youtube i'm just like i haven't been great um i'm trying to get better at that this year but like great at like cross posting so um yeah i'll put that um needle felting i did it it's just like a super duper quick video uh on uh, when i needle fel felted that heart just to talk about needle felting a little bit more yeah i'll, I'll up upload all that to to youtube um i'll try and do that tomorrow but I'll, I'll let you guys know when it's up we'll do like a little little um see <sighs> I gotta get this back here again. I, I unwound my sweater backwards, which in knitting is weird because you're always kind of going one way and I went the opposite way just to, um, so I didn't have to keep turning the sweater and now it's awkward. But yeah, I'll, I'll um, we'll probably send a newsletter even when I get all those up. Oh, uh, Millisandra, uh, Miller Sandra is saying um, these additions are making it much more versatile. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you've heard um, that the square needles make odd-shaped stitches? Oh, I hadn't heard that. I mean, I'm not... I feel like I'm not pro enough to <laughs> for that to be a problem. Um, theoretically, I don't know why that would be, because, you know, it's the same distance around, um, unless you're, like, using some weird yarn. But I guess I, I wouldn't know for sure. But that's interesting. I'm going to have to research that. I just like that um, now all of my knitting needles, since these are those interchangeable ones, all of the needle, all the needles just fit in that one little tiny pack, and that's that's what I've been trying to actively use, and not my other needles. Uh, so I'd love for that to just like be my only 
knitting needles and then maybe um, donate or whatever my other other needles. Just because, just because, like how how can I uh, just have less stuff? Basically, my knitting needles are all over the place. They're in one spot, but like it's just like explodes when I when I do that when I go look for them. So I like just this little pack of it. All right, how are we looking here? Gosh, it doesn't really seem like. Oh man, maybe I should switch to the smaller needles. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does this feel like... Maybe I need to knit more to know, but like... It's not getting wider, is it? No. I, what I don't want it to be is like, I don't want them to flare out. And I think it's just like... I think it's just the knitting needles right now. I think, I think it's probably pretty close. Yeah, it's kind of curving in. I don't want it like to look so different. It looks it looks like it is just naturally coming off of the end. So I think we're I think we're okay as far as um size of needle and size of yarn. Yeah, I'm liking it. It's cute. No, not wider. No, I definitely don't want to go wider for sure. I'd I'd you know, I'd like it to like squeeze in more theoretically, but I think it might as I keep going just cuz the thread is smaller. I feel like so here Let's look up a little bit closer. The thread is a little bit smaller. It is a little airier. Um, that might be because I am using these larger needles, like maybe one size bigger than what I need to, but I don't know. I think in the end it's going to be okay. When you close it up, it should be okay. Okay, good. All right, where are we at here? Let's rotate ourselves a bit again. I mean, the, the thing with um, these loose knitting needle like cables, I do have to like suck them in each time. Uh, that's not a, that's just because of this method versus using double pointed needles. So I suppose I wouldn't have to do this each time with double pointed needles, but oh well. This is fine too. Some more slack here. Oh, to honey, to Heeny is saying. Yeah, it's not getting wider. Okay, good. <laughs> that's what I'm scared of. I, I don't want it to get wider. But I didn't want it to be, like, so tiny either, and that's what I was nervous about as well. So, all right. Let's get into the groove again here. Definitely liking the continental style for this better. Probably looking, looking a little clumsy. I don't, don't knit every day, even though that'd be amazing. Oh my God. Just wake up and like turn movies on all day and just like knit for the entire day. That would be like the mega vacation. <laughs> that just, uh, like just thinking about that is, is relaxing. Um, so at least I get an hour right here. That's nice. You get to hear all the little clickities so the metal the metal um needles do sound a little bit different i have heard people like like different needles for how they glide through different yarns and stuff like bamboo needles versus metal versus you know i don't know whatever else all right let's rotate this way oh i think i lost my yeah this guy's off but Oh well, I don't need him either, I don't think. If I switch, um, like if I move over a few stitches so I don't have that little ladder going on in here, maybe I should do that now. Should we add a couple stitches to this side? Oh, we'll do it next time. Um, but then maybe I'll, I'll throw the that needle minder on again, or the, um, the stitch counter. Oh, Sylvia says metal is too cold for me. I'll stick to the bamboo. Yeah, most of my other needles are bamboo, so I'm still getting used to these ones for sure. These just make me happy to use because I feel like they're my fancy needles, so I feel fancy when I use them. Relax. 
relaxing. So yeah, I, I want probably a good three inches worth of ribbing here because like I said, it is pretty short and I, and I will measure. Um, I'll throw it on again and I thought I was gonna be chilly here without it without it on, but just being near it, I feel like it's making me warm. All right, rotate again. Let's see if we can go this way one more time. All right, right now I think I can slide over some stitches. Let's do them in twos. There, I'll just shimmy two over. So there, I added two to this side, and that just means that where my area that I was going up is just going to change to a different spot, so it won't be as loose, hopefully. And I am going to throw my counter on again here. So why not? Not my counter, my uh, what is it called? Yeah, stitch counter, I guess. So we've done what have we done? Like one, two, three, four rows so far. Actually, it seems a little bit more than that. And he says, I remember saving and saving when I was first started working to get a nice set like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, stitch marker. Yeah. Not stitch counter. That's a different thing. I know. That's, like, I love. That's why I just love these needles. I just feel like, ooh, doing my fancy stuff with my fancy needles. Like I said, though, I do like that it all fits in that tiny bag, and I really haven't found a need Although, like I said, I haven't stitched in a while, knit in a while, but um, I haven't found a huge need for all my other needles. Because it sucks, because you get a new project, right? And it's like, ugh, I don't have those needles. Now you got to buy a whole new set of needles, or the needle has the wrong size cable on, uh, and just all that just is annoying. So I was really happy with these interchangeable ones. Let's go back around this way. I am always scared that I'm going to pull all the stitches off my needle, too. <laughs> I want to do a project sometime where I on purpose knit a whole pile and then on purpose make mistakes, like on purpose, like pull off all the stitches from the needle and then just be like, okay, now you got to fix them and you got to put them all on the right way and just, just like get over that fear. <laughs> uh, that's got to be on my list. All right. Now the, now it's definitely starting to feel smaller, which is actually great. I do want it to kind of uh, gather up, be a little bit tighter um, than what it was because it was pretty loose. So it, it kind of feels like we are doing right now what they should have done back here. Um, because it doesn't look like they switched to a smaller needle. And, like, typically I think when you start a ribbing, you want to get a little bit smaller. Um, I think that's sort of what we're doing here. But we didn't do it with the needle, though. We did it, well, theoretically. I don't know what size needle they used. But um, our yarn is a little bit smaller, so I think that makes up for it. Oh, <laughs> Misty says, I'm a monster. I frog airs in front of my bestie to see her look of horror. <laughs> oh, Linda said, you went for knitting. Looks good so far. Yep, I was deciding. I didn't know until about an hour ago, um, or like two hours ago, if I was going to do this crochet or knitted. Uh, like in my head, ideally I was going to do it knitted because just to extend, make it an extension of what's already here but then I'm like ah oh, but crochet would be so easy I just grab those stitches and just like do it really quick and in my head I feel like that can be a little I don't know like it'd be I don't have to be as perfect I think with with crochet and I 
was just going to like go at it. But then I'm like, oh man, I'd really love to do the knitting, but then I'm going to have to do all this research. So I, I, I ended up with knitting. I did have to research, do a quick search of like how to pick up stitches. I feel like I could have figured it out um, theoretically, but um, I did get a good good tip that I wouldn't have thought of. I was just going to pick up like the little loops from the cast off and they're like, no, pick them up from like the knit, like the, the first row of stitches underneath that. So I did that. So that was good. And um, and then I had to like read how to do a cast off for ribbing again, just so it's stretchy. So it's not like a tight cast off. Uh, so I, I looked up how to do that as well, but that we don't need to deal with yet. So I should update this front area too. So, um, so this seam isn't in the same place the whole time. Um, well, we'll just let it be for now. Sky over and yeah, you know what? I think I am gonna put two more. I'm gonna put get these two stitches on this needle. So I'm gonna pull this out here. I think this is gonna make sense. I'm just kind of moving my start point here and there just so. Uh, you can't tell, like, there won't be, like, a weird floaty gap there. So there, now, now these are in this needle. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, good. Uh, knit pearls again. So I have a friend that can do all this without looking at all. Like, she doesn't have to look down. And she practiced to do that, and that's a goal, too, with knitting, just to um, be able to look straight up. Like, you know, like if there's a something blocking my, like just putting a curtain on, um, in between my eyes and, <laughs> and uh, my knitting needles and see if I can, can do it. Just practice. Uh, that would be, that'd be cool. That'd be a good skill. She reads books while she knits. Isn't that something? That's the benefit. So I can sort of listen to shows and everything still, but not, um, not <laughs> read a book. Well, it's definitely smaller, but I think that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. It's a funny little, uh, little line where it starts, but I mean, that makes sense because we're changing colors and everything. Ooh, let's get more yarns again. Linda says the crochet would be easier for sure, but the continuation looks better. Better, yeah, that's 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 what my final final decision was because of that. You knit and read or watch TV, but you're not doing it completely blind. You do it by feel. Yeah, that's that's what I want to figure out how to do. Oh, I remember. Um, I I have a like a date set for that sort of. <laughs> Not a, not a real date, but like, I'm like, oh, next time I have to knit a whole pile of washcloths, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm going to practice doing it without looking. So that's, that's my time of dedication to um, learning how to knit <laughs> without looking at it. I already was like, okay, that's the project. When I have to knit more washcloths, that'll be, that'll be the time. Mm 
it's looking cute. I know for sure I have to be at least this long. So we'll um, we'll do one more round here, I think, and then probably wrap it up for the evening. But I I feel confident in this. And uh, um, let's see, it's only Wednesday, so I'm pretty sure we can get two cuffs done um, by Friday. So that's that's fabulous. And uh, you know, in my in my video, I uh, mentioned that it'd be really fun, like, to sneak some pockets in, because we could actually slice. <laughs> this is crazy, but we could actually slice across the sweater um, instead of just up a seam, but really like slice across it and sneak that and uh, turn, or, like, make some pockets, but. That's that's too much for me. I'll I'll settle with these cuffs for now. But when I was um trying it on, I'm like, man, it'd be great if there was pockets right here. So I just move that stitch marker over. I can do without the pockets, but ugh, it was so comfy today. It's so thick and squishy. Ugh, I was toasty warm and comfy all day today. I, it, I really will be like wearing it every day. It's gonna be my, my house sweater, my house coat. It gets chilly, chilly, chilly in here. Especially depending on what room you're in. This way again. It is quite a bit tighter, but I don't know, not really. I think it's just right, actually. My smoking jacket minus the smoking. <laughs> So there aren't any, no lean, there are no side seams. Oh, yeah, I could cut, I see what you're saying. I could cut up a seam like I did the steaking, but there's no, there's no like side seams. Like it wasn't like a front and back. This is, a, this was knit in the round. Um, I'm pretty sure. That's not a side seam. Yeah, no, it was, it was knit in the round. Yeah, there's no side seam. So uh, I would have to cut into it um, if I wanted to do that. So I could, but I probably won't. Just because I want, I want to call this a finished project basically. So um, yeah, it would be cute to have um, some pockets in here, but then I'd have to so cute little pockets and then I'd have to do all the prep on the actual sweater and and all that and, and have it be you know equal on each side <laughs> that sounds like a challenge and I'll settle with the longer cuffs that's gonna be the the bigger deal for me for sure I like them extra long and if they're too long I want to be able to fold them back but I want to be able to scooch them down if I'm super cold so it's nice, long, extra cuffs on here. All right, two more stitches for the night and then we will pick this up tomorrow, but I'm feeling great about it. I love when the proof of concept happens. Like this was just a thought like, um, am I gonna be able to pick up those stitches right? and and all that, but I think it's turning out great. And it is, I mean, look at it. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely squeezing in quite a bit here, um, which is perfect. Uh, it's actually doing a whole lot more than I thought, but I think, you know, once you have it on, it'll stretch out. But that's, that's kind of how you want a cuff to be too, right? You want it to kind of uh, taper a little bit. So I think this ribbing is just turning out Perfect. I am so over the moon with this. I really uh, didn't think it was going to look this nice. So yeah, I'm probably going to go another inch and a half or so. I will try it on um, again tomorrow and we can just take a look. I'll, I'll, I got my ruler here. We'll just measure 
measure it because we'll definitely get this one done tomorrow. And we got a whole whole other fella here, but it really does add to it. It actually makes it kind of look like a letter jacket, sort of like an old, um, you know, one of those vintage sweaters with the letter on, you know, like some school university sweater, Ugh, which makes me like it even more. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys again. Uh, uh, this is just looking so sweet, this little uh, rib on here. Um, so I will be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And uh, I think I'm breaking up over on, on TikTok. I think I'm about out of batteries here. Uh, but yeah, this is great. So more knitting tomorrow. We will finish up this cuff. We will do a cast off. Um, a rib for ribbing which will make it a little stretchier i've never done that i don't think <laughs> not without it being in the pattern so uh we'll give that a try and uh, yeah i'm excited this is working out fabulous so thanks again for being here and i will see you tomorrow at 8 30 p.m central time have a great evening everyone good night All right. I don't know if you guys are still here on TikTok, but thank you guys again for joining me 